the first principle of quantum physics is consciousness is creating your life experiences. Change consciousness, you change your life experiences. The most valid science on the planet is quantum physics. It's the most tested, the most affirmed, the most truthful of any science on the planet. Biology says that through epigenetics and quantum physics says that is the foundational belief of the science itself. The mind is the matrix of all matter. It's the mind and the matrix. That's where the movie came from. The matrix was about the mind controlling the matrix. Every child is programmed in the first seven years of its life. The Jesuits, 400 years. Give me a child until there's seven, I will show you the man. If I educate your first seven years, whatever program I put in, the rest of your life will be a manifestation of that program. Give me a child for the first seven, I'll show you the man. What they knew is whoever programs your first seven years determines the character of the rest of your life. Uh, that's when Catholic school started because then they started to recognize, oh, why don't we start with the kids? Let's program the kids. And then we control them the rest of their lives. And that's what happened. We have been systematically disempowered by programming. And this is where the movie The Matrix is all about. All of the programming is to take away your power because if you take away your power, you will invest everything you have for someone who is going to save you. And yet, if I teach you that you're a victim and you have no power, exercising that consciousness by definition makes you a victim. Change the storyline. I'm not a victim if I change the programming that disempowered me when I was a kid. And that's the wake up call that we have to face right now. The brain is designed to download programs by observing the environment because the brain is in a state of hypnosis for seven years as the predominant activity of the brain. Children below age seven mix the real world and the imaginary world together. Ride a broom and it's a horse. The mother asks for the broom, the child on the broom. It's not a broom. To that child, at that moment in Theta, that's a real horse. Theta is hypnosis. It's like a video recorder. Whatever I see, hear, smell, touch, it's sent into my brain and recorded in my subconscious as an experience. Recording the experiences of the mother, recording the experiences of the father, recording the experiences of the siblings and the community. I go, so what? So then that means my life is my program. I say, no, no. To create your life, you have to use the creative brain, conscious mind. Otherwise, your activities are controlled by your life experiences. You learned how to walk before you were two. Thank God you have a subconscious that memorized that so you can walk without thinking about it. It's a program. I go, so why is it relevant? And the answer is 95% of our life is coming from the program. So our lives aren't reflecting what we wish and desire. Our lives are reflecting what we've learned from other people. I say, well, then how the hell are you going to manifest wishes and desires? I say, well, first of all, you have to stop playing the program. I say, well, oh, how do you stop playing the program? I say, stop thinking. It's called being mindful, Buddhist mindfulness. Mindful means you keep your conscious mind in the driver's seat all of the time and stop thinking. Ninety-five percent of the day we're being driven by our subconscious programs. Most of them are disempowering. So I say, so every day life is blah, 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 blah. Why? Because we're playing the stupid programs from subconscious ninety-five percent of the day. This day you meet this person who is going to be the love of your life. Twenty-four hours later, your life isn't blah, blah, blah anymore. Your life is, oh my God, isn't this the most wonderful experience ever? I'm so in love, I'm so happy, I'm joyful, I'm healthy. I love everything, even a stupid job is not so bad. I'm living in love. Science has recognized at that time, you're not thinking, you're staying present and enjoying what you have. And I say, but when you're staying present, then you're not playing the program and go, right. And if you're not playing the program, then who's driving? Consciousness. I say, where's consciousness? Wishes and desires. I say, then what do you think happens the moment you fell in love? You stop playing the programs that have been destroying you and you start driving with a conscious mind toward wishes and desires. 24 hours later, you have a different life. And I say, but that life was always there. The only reason why you didn't see it because you were playing programs 95% of the time until the day you stopped playing it.
And the day you stop playing it, you become the creator of your life instead of the person who's following the programs that you were downloaded with. That's where your power comes from. And it was not an accident. It was a manifestation. You create honeymoon. It takes the conscious mind to manifest a honeymoon. And if the conscious mind gets busy thinking, the honeymoon disappears. Why did you stop thinking in the first place? Because you and your partner both stopped thinking. And both of you are operating from conscious, creative mind, wishes and desires, the result, heaven on earth. But the moment you start thinking, I say that's when the honeymoon ends. The honeymoon worked when both people were using creative wishes and desires and manifesting a honeymoon. But the moment one or both start thinking, then the programs that didn't show up up until now because they were subconscious, they didn't play, all of a sudden start to play. And these behaviors are not the behaviors that created a honeymoon. They're in fact, many of them destroy the honeymoon. And that's why the honeymoon disappears. When I was doing my research back in the 60s, I was teaching something called genetic determinism, which most of the public still believes in, even though it's totally false. And I say, what does it mean? It says genes control the character of your life heart disease, cancer, diabetes. We say genes are causing this. And I say, when we're teaching that, what are we teaching? Just step back and say, what are we teaching? We're teaching that genes control your life and you have no control over them because they turn on and off when they turn on and off and you have nothing to do about that and they control the character and you can't change them. If you don't like the character, you're stuck with these genes. And then we're told that these genes are operating independent of you and then all of a sudden you start to realize, oh my God, I'm not in control of my life. My genes are in control of my life. And my research on stem cells revealed the complete opposite story. Genes don't turn on and off by themselves. Genes are controlled by the environment in which the person or animal exists in. I go, why? If you change the environment, you change your genetic activity. And I say even more so, between the environment and your body is consciousness. So the environmental signal is, in, is picked up by the nervous system, but then consciousness interprets that. All of a sudden, it's not the environment that is directly controlling your body, it's your interpretation. And I go, ah, so if you change your interpretation, then you change the character of your life. I go, absolutely, 100%. And I say, why is that relevant? Because then you are the master, not the victim. So old science genetics, Hey, you're a victim of the genes that your parents gave you. New science, epigenetics, you're the master. You can rewrite that genetic activity based on your consciousness and the way you are living. The public is still locked into, I am a victim. When they would understand the real truth of epigenetics, your consciousness is controlling this. That's where empowerment comes from.